Hey guys, welcome to another Art Lessons with Bobby. I'm Bobby, and today we're going to do a little drawing of garden gnomes. So you may have seen these guys. They've been around for quite a long time, longer than I thought originally. Um, they hang out in your gardens, and they're supposed to bring magical, um, I don't know, magic to your garden and make it grow. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So it turns out these things have been around since uh, ancient times. So you might read about them in ancient Roman myths. Um, they actually only began to be popular though around the 1800s. Um, a German man, actually a sculptor uh, in Germany did the first one of these. And then around the 1850s, they took off in England. So um, I started doing these gnomes when my friend Christy asked me to do some little paintings for her for her business. It's called Artichoke Crafts and she likes to use original artwork and put it on trinkets like this or bags or things like that. Um, so I took off with the idea and the next thing I knew I was painting all kinds of gnomes for her. So I thought it would be fun since it's springtime to teach you guys how to draw some gnomes. So let's get started. Okay, so here is basically what we're gonna do today. Um, this is just a basic gnome. You can see how we can just start real simple. And then as you figure this out, then you can start adding stuff. Like, you know, I this one has a shorter beard and you can see more of the body. And I added some details later on. And obviously this is not a normal hat, it's a beehive. Um, and you can change the hat. I have one where you um, add flowers to the hat. And then of course I did this whole Harry Potter series uh, for my friend Christie's mug for artichoke crafts. That's where she sells these things. Um, anyway, uh, just we're gonna start basic. Don't get frustrated because you wanna go crazy and do the really cool one. Um, learn how to do this and then I promise the next thing you know you're gonna be drawing all kinds of different characters. So in order to get started, we're just gonna need a normal piece of paper. That's a great thing about this is you could do this on anything. Um, so what I like to do is find the middle. Some of you are probably really good at just knowing, oh, that's where the middle is. So the middle is basically where the nose goes. The nose is right in the center of the um, gnome's body. Now, um, my favorite way to find the middle of a piece of paper is uh, just to fold the paper in half kind of roughly, you don't want a really solid crease. Fold it in half like that. So now we have the middle this direction. Now we need to find the middle this way. This is how I do this with my students a lot of times. And you just kind of gently press. And then the next thing you know, oh, boom, look, there's the middle. Um, this also is gonna help you because we're gonna draw a circle. The second step is to draw a circle for the nose. Now, um, one of the things that I had to figure out when I was learning how to draw these gnomes is um how big should the nose be i don't know well that's just completely up to you because gnomes are similar to people where some of us have bigger noses than others so that's going to make your gnome different from the rest so what i like to tell my students is just to make their no uh nose about three fingers wide and you can kind of make like reference marks for your fingers if you put your fingers on the paper like this and then that'll kind of give you a boundary. And then you can connect the dots. So I made these really light dots. They're just to kind of guide me. And now I'm going to connect the dots with a rounded, very light line. So all of your drawing marks should be really light to start off with because you want to make sure that they're just right. And eventually we're gonna outline this whole thing and erase our pencil marks anyway. So there's the basic size of my nose. Now the next step is gonna to be to draw the edge of the hat. So we're gonna want our hat to come out from about the middle of the nose. And we wanna leave plenty of room on the side over here because the arms are gonna to have to come out. So you wanna have about two to three fingers widths. I might've made this a little bit long so make sure that when you draw this line it's right on the fold and leave a little bit of room over here because our arm i'll show you is gonna have to swing out right here 
So then I'm going to come out from this side, leaving room over here. And the next step after drawing the bottom of the hat is to create this pointy kind of hat. So I would just encourage you to draw a normal hat. If this is the first time you're doing this. Um, as you get better, you can turn it into other things. So just the normal hat is a triangular shape. So I'm just going to reference. I know that the top's going to have to be at the top there. And it's going to swoop down like this and meet at that point. And then this side will swoop down like that. Now, we don't want to worry about these being a perfect straight line. Please don't use a ruler or anything because you want to imagine that this hat is made of some kind of a cloth. So it's going to have wobbly lines. That's just natural. You want it to look a little bit more natural. Now for the beard. Um, the beard was something it took me a little while to kind of figure out. You can have a short beard, but then you're going to have to draw the belly and the arms and all that stuff. If you're just starting off, it's really kind of a nice cheat to make the beard big and just imagine it covering the whole body of the gnome. So that's what I'm going to have you guys do now, just because I'm not there to help you draw the rest of it. So the beard should kind of be a little bit wide. It should look like it's coming out from under the hat. Do you see how I move that line in a little bit? If your beard comes out like this from this side of the hat, it's gonna look like the beard is overlapping the hat and that wouldn't look natural. You want it to look like the beard is kind of snugged down over, um, or the hat snugged down over like this little project. So the hat's gonna go over and then the beard's gonna come out. So we're going to now, after we do the beard, notice how it comes down to a point here and we have room for the feet. If your beard goes all the way down to the bottom, then you won't really have room for your feet and your legs. So kind of work with this. I like to use a pencil so I can erase if I mess up or something. Um, now the legs. So for the legs, if you make your legs really narrow like this, it's going to appear that your gnome has this really slender little body under here, which that might be what you want. If your legs are super wide like this, it's going to look like you have a really wide gnome. So I like just a medium sized gnome. So I'm going to make my legs come out like this. Now you're going to have your legs come down. It, you can have your legs go longer than the beard, shorter than the beard. It's totally up to you. So we're going to have our legs come down. Now see how they kind of swoop out like this. So the wider part of a body is up here. And then the, the pants are going to get a little bit wider here because they're going to be kind of like big baggy pants like this. Now we're not going to close the bottom of the pants because we have to put shoes on next. So I just like to swoop the legs out like this. It gives it a little character also. So the next thing after the legs are the feet. So um, in when I teach kids how to draw this, I like to relate the shapes to familiar shapes that that kids might know. So a lot of you might be familiar with a fish shape. So it occurred to me one day that the end of the shoe kind of looks like a fish if you were to draw just sort of like a cartoony type of a fish. So if you draw that shape like this and go off the paper it's totally fine. Um, that's kind of what the end of the shoe looks like. And the other thing I realized that if you don't make these two shoes exactly the same size, it's okay. These gnomes are kind of like bums, right? And also, if one shoe is bigger than the other, maybe one shoe is looking closer to you. Uh, maybe one shoe is turned in a different direction. So don't worry and fret about making the shoes exactly the same. You might want to, you know, look at them and try and see how it goes, but... I wouldn't worry too much about it. So there's one of my shoes there. Now we need to make the heel of the shoe. So we're going to draw a line between and we're going to, um, it's kind of like a, the letter L right here. So there's one heel and then we're going to just do a backwards L straight down that same line and over. And then we just need to connect the heel to the shoe like that. And there's your shoes. 
Now, the other thing is that we want these pants to be rolled up. Um, I like to make it, just give it a little bit of detail. And so all you have to do to do that is just draw this sort of rectangular shape right here. Right on top of the shoes. And that's going to make it look like the jeans are rolled up a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to do the arm. And the arm is going to come out from right around where the beard is. Now, this gnome is going to be carrying some flowers. And so one hand will have the flowers. And I thought it would just be nice and easy to tuck the other arm behind the gnome. And so we're going to swoop this arm out and around like that. Kind of like, um, if you turn it this way, you could see it kind of looks like a sunset coming up over the side of his body. So it's just a little half circle coming out and around. And you want to kind of think about it. If these are his shoulders, his arm would be coming out there. And then your arm kind of ends around your hips. So that's where it's ending on him too. So after you do the arm, it was super easy. The next thing you're going to do is the, um, it's like a, a fist. We're going to make him hold the flowers. So what you're going to do is make little, uh, right across from where the hand would be, go straight across from here. We're going to make these oval shapes. These are going to be the little fingers. It's going to be a little bit cartoony. So I'm only going to do three fingers. If you're more of a realist, go ahead, make four. It doesn't matter. Um, and so this is the, the hand. Kind of imagine it going like that. We're not even going to worry about doing the thumb. It's just to keep it easy. So after you get those three fingers on there, you're going to draw the stems for the flowers. So we want this hand to cover up. So if you look at me holding my pencil, it's going to be like this, right? You can't see that part of the pencil. So we're going to draw the stems just coming up and down. So there's one flower. We don't want to go too crazy. Just do a couple. There's two and there's three. So three flowers. Remember, everything we're drawing here, we're going to have to outline with a Sharpie. So take it easy on yourself. Okay, so the next thing is the, the flower parts up here. So I'm just gonna do daisies. Those are my favorite flowers. So um, to do a daisy, you just do a circle. You gotta imagine we gotta put those petals there so you don't want your circle to be right over the stem. You have to leave room for your petal. And so we're going to draw the petals now off of that circle. And they're just gonna swoop around. It doesn't have to be perfect like that. And then if you want, you can go back and add a couple extra. And then we're going to do another one, another flower. It can be the same kind of flower. Um, if you want to, you can always erase one and give yourself more room. Um, I think I'm just going to do a flower like, like this. I'm just going to tuck a flower back there. And then maybe I'll do another daisy overlapping his beard like this. And now this is why I like using a pencil because when you overlap things, you can always erase your lines, even though we're going to color it, it's still nice to get those out of the way. Okay. So there's our no. Now the next step is to outline this with a Sharpie and color it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And when I come back, we will have a finished gnome.